The Supreme Court has just ruled unanimously that Colorado courts cannot keep you-know-who off the state's ballot for engaging in insurrection, finding that a state cannot make a call that could have a national impact on a federal election. Of course, unless it's about a woman's right to choose, but let's not get into that. <laughs> what do you all think of this? I mean, is anybody surprised by this decision? No. no. And no. I actually think it was the right decision to mm -hmm. make because it would have, you know, if Colorado had been allowed to do that, we'd have this chaotic sort of process where you have 50 states and some are choosing to put him on the ballot and some are choosing not to put him on the ballot. So that's why this, this decision was unanimous mm -hmm. in judgment. But if you read the dissent mm -hmm. by Justice, Justices uh, Sotomayor and Kagan and also Jackson, they are saying the Supreme Court went too far here because they answered a question that wasn't before them. The only question that was before this court was, can a state do this? Mm -hmm. Instead, what they did was they insulated mm -hmm. all alleged insurrectionists from future challenges to their holding federal office. And it is a tenet of Supreme Court law. I am a Supreme Court admitted, a bar admitted attorney. It says what it does today, the court should have left undone. And we always learn that in law school. The Supreme Court should just answer the question before it. Before, but and I have wow. far too much, I had far too much hope that the court would be united in this and not overstep in favor of Donald Trump. And I think what we saw was a court where justices that behaved in a partisan manner, and that disappoints Amy me. Coney Barrett, though, jumped on that opinion about mm -hmm. the overstep of um, the punishment, that it shouldn't be left then to Congress. Yeah, she had a concurring judgment. Yeah, a concurring well. judgment, which I thought was important because we do talk so much about the partisanship of a group of people mm -hmm. that should not be partisan. Mm -hmm. So that was reassuring to me, and of course it was for women that were talking about that yeah. part. It didn't, it didn't surprise me. I'd started to gain f faith, as Sonny would tell us, like, this is going to get him, and I was like, ah, ah, ah. But seeing it, I now get the chaos which would ensue, and I think it's important when you don't like the outcome which I'm not saying I don't, but that you look at the states that you would disagree with and what they could do in turn. Yeah. So I look at a Texas and Governor Abbott. I look at a Florida and DeSantis. If you're okay with Colorado doing this, you have to then yeah. be okay with these states doing what we've already seen them do with count yeah. counter trigger laws. And when he was uh, when he was running for president, you know, back when dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Ron DeSantis actually at one point said, I'm actually looking at this in Florida now. Could we make a credible case that Biden should be removed because of whatever yeah. reason he can come? And that could be happening, as you said, yeah. in every other state. Now, it's really important that we remember, though, they ruled on, on this question. They did not rule on whether he is an insurrectionist. No. No. They did not rule on whether he helped uh, lead an insurrection mm -hmm. and promote an insurrection. Those are two very separate questions. I agree with this. I think it needs to be up to the voters. I think it was opening up a Pandora's box. And one of the things that John Roberts said earlier was, you know, how do we know that this is not going to, that then elections don't end up being decided by just a few states. But the last point I want to make, something that's really troubling me, though. Look, we have spent days in the last few weeks watching Fannie Willis be uh, on a witness stand and going through the fact that she was having an affair with a guy she hired uh, to prosecute this case. It's a conflict of interest case. It bothers me tremendously that we have now had this case where Clarence Thomas has sat there, and we have another case, the immunity case, where Clarence Thomas apparently plans to sit there, despite the fact that in my view, and I think in a lot of Americans' view, he has a conflict of interest, because if Fannie Will is sleeping with that guy you think was a conflict of interest, what do you think of uh, uh, Clarence Thomas being married to a woman who was actually trying to overturn the elections? And that is something that continues to be uh, unaddressed, and I must say this, both Clarence and Jenny Thomas have denied any wrongdoing. Well, listen, um, I think it was the right decision, not a welcome one. It sometimes mm -hmm. can be the right thing precedentially, but also maybe you worry about it for the country. But the justices were always going to look at what could this mean 10, 20 years down the road. Mm -hmm. And to Anna's point, there was also a Missouri Secretary of State, a Republican uh, Secretary of State, who threatened to keep Biden off the ballot under the same decision. So it does open a bit of a slippery slope. But I think the takeaway from today is this. The only place to beat Donald Trump is at the ballot box. And the way to do that, yes, you have to litigate 
his unfitness, his anti-constitutional stances. But we also have to pay attention to the issues that the voters who are still with him care about. I think that I'm curious to hear what Joe Biden says in the State of the Union coming up later this week. But voters, for the first time, the majority are saying, Border security matters to us. Mm -hmm. They're saying the economy matters. And we've seen some major economic recoveries. We've also seen some places it's lagging, like grocery prices. We have to realize that voters aren't necessarily following this 24-hour news cycle of the Trump drama. They're voting with their pocketbooks. And to beat him, it's going to come down to how do you peel just enough of those people away and convince them there's a better future with a different alternative? But I think they're also voting uh, based upon a lot of the misinformation that they're getting from Fox News, right, and from other outlets. I think that that, that has a lot to do with with why they're sticking with him in this cultish manner, and let's call it what it is. It feels like a cultish matter. But to your point, yes, they, they didn't find that he was an insurrectionist. They didn't reach that issue. But what they did do when you read the entire opinion is, even if he were an insurrectionist, they have somehow insulated him from becoming, uh, from becoming a, the president. So if he is found to be an insurrectionist, the way I read this, mm -hmm. he can still be the president of the United States. And I thought that the 14th Amendment and our framers knew better. You know, the, the thing that bothers me about this, and I, I know it's probably the right decision, but I don't like that we've normalized this man. Yeah. It has really irritated the poo out of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we have normalized him and his bad behavior. I get that the law says, listen, it would be really rough and it should be the Congress that makes these decisions. And yet that's not how we've been acting. We put, we keep saying states' laws, we keep giving people the right to make these changes and then they make a change and they say, well, we don't want this. And everybody says, well, no, of course we shouldn't want this. But the problem is, why have we normalized it? Why is this now normal behavior? I think it's, you know, I think it's just so Donald Trump-centric, this normalization of bad behavior. And it didn't just start now, right? When Republicans, including evangelical Republicans, voted for a guy who we all heard on tape mm -hmm. boast about sexual assault and still made that normal because he was, of what he was going to do to the Supreme Court, that was the beginning of the normalization. There's so many things in, in his life and certainly in his political career and as he runs that Donald Trump has done and said that would have mandated any other normal human being to resign and shame the next day. Mm -hmm. Look, if Joe Biden had one count against him, not 91, he could not be the Democratic presidential candidate. If Joe Biden had committed sexual assault and we had heard him, he could not be running for president. If Joe Biden had been found liable yeah. for sexual assault to the tune of $83 million, he could not be running for president. If Joe Biden had been found liable for half a million dollars for fraud. He could not be the Democratic candidate for president. But Republicans, Republicans, by continuing to vote for this man and pretending all of these wrongdoings have not happened, they have normalized just evil and wrongdoing. Well, I, yeah. That's the, and that's the thing. You know, I mean, you know, I'm a, I, I, I'm a really, was a really big fan of the Supreme Court because yeah. I always felt that they were, whether I liked their decisions or not, that they, they, with the exception of, of, um... Clarence Thomas? No, no, um... Oh my goodness! It, that, that, it doesn't Capital. even matter. But it, it 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 doesn't matter because for a second we all said, well, why are they voting, making it okay for Bush to become president? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we Bush we got oh, very very that. annoyed with that. That's the first time that the Supreme well, Court really up, dabbled in politics. Well, like, like, that. like that, yeah. And yeah. so this this thing where he has now once again been given a rubber to put on and walk through. The poo. Yes, yes. That's yeah. you heard me. But whoop, there is Ooh. one piece of good news in this, which yes. is the Supreme Court showed that they could hear oral arguments and within one month render a judgment, which mm -hmm. means that the January 6th oh. immunity question, they should be able to hear those oral arguments and yep. by the end of May we should have a question and answer yes. in the January 6th case yes. fails I don't, before. I don't think we're gonna like the answer though, because when you oh, I think when you when will. you read this, they pretty much insulated him from being the an insurrectionist. Case? Yeah. I'd be I think that would be nine zero again. 
Yeah, but but, but, I, but, but I would like to see what their reasoning is, how they get to it. Well, and, and well, let's, we, let's all, we also what, have to realize that I'm the Supreme Court now. you grew up with, uh, I we grew up with largely, is a very different Supreme Court. Oh, this is honey, a Supreme Court. This is more like the Supreme Court I grew up with. Well, this is very partisan. Okay. Supreme Court mm -hmm. justices used to get not, uh, confirmed by 90-some votes. Yeah. yeah. Well, now they get confirmed on a strict men. party line. Yeah. And it so they, it's partisan. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes it was. Yeah. But, you know, when it was all men voting for all men, we ended up with the Grand Wizard. You know, we ended up on with all bench, kinds yes. of people on the bench. We did. Now, they all evolved. I will say, yeah. most, most, of them, of them. most of them evolved and became yeah. really interesting jurists. But I, I have always known that there was that possibility. And what I grew up watching. I watched when the first women were getting in. Yeah. I watched when women were breaking those ceilings. And now I'm watching people shut those ceilings down, as well as removing history. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are in the process Precedent. of yeah. <laughs> removing <laughs> history. There's a much. lot going on, and we have normalized it. And I guess what my point <laughs> might be is this really comes down to us. You're going to hear a lot about polls coming up over the next couple of months. The only poll that you need to be concerned with is what's happening in your local areas, because those are the people who are making the decisions for you. You got to get out there. Your, con your Congress people are much more important now. Your Congress people yes. are much more important, says the Supreme Court, because the Supreme Court says, if you want to get rid of somebody, if you want to get rid of a president, under this section, you have to have a two-thirds vote of Congress. And, and so now, who do you vote for for Congress? Do you vote for someone that will keep in line with the tradition of the Supreme Court or not? Hopefully you, want some, hopefully you want an America that is going to work a little better than this one that is working. <laughs> I, I guess that's the best way.